I define public access as free access to scholarly research articles to the public at some defined time point after publication. If that time point is zero, you're talking about open access. If that time point is greater than zero, you're talking about delayed public access. I don't use the term delayed open access, that's an oxymoron. Open access means immediate access. Publishers who provide delayed public access recoup their costs by keeping their content under access control for a short period of time to sell subscriptions. What's the barrier to open access for our journals? And the basic answer is that they're selective journals. And as a result, the cost per article is very high. We release all of our content to the public six months after publication. We've done this since 2001. So we've done it for more than nine years and our revenues increased every year through 2009. So given the high cost uh, per article of publishing in a, a selective journal, is it possible to publish the selective journal under an open access model? That is to make all the content free immediately. And the answer is yes, um, with subsidies to author payments. And these subsidies can take the form of grants. Uh, one example is the Public Library of Science. They got many millions of dollars in grants as startup money. They can take the form of memberships. Uh, both P PLOS and Biomed Central sell memberships to institutions. Uh, these usually come with a reduced art, uh, article charge to the authors of that institution. Um, but these seem suspiciously like subscriptions to me. Another way to subsidize uh, a selective open access journal is to sell the news content. Uh, an example of that is the British Medical Journal. They make all of their research content open access and sell subscriptions to the news content. They have a very large news section. I'll uh, use BMJ again as an example. Uh, another way to subsidize is to sell subscriptions to other journals in a stable of journals. And a, a final way uh, to subsidize author payments is by publishing an archival or high volume open access journal. Um, and a very successful example of that, uh, that uh, many people are aware of is PLOS One. All biomedical research funders and institutions should mandate public release of content six months after publication. When all biomedical research publications are available to the public, an economic layer will be added to the definition of selective versus archival journals. Selective journals publish content that can be sold in the first six months after publication. Both of these have the goal of experimenting with uh, converting existing journals to an open access model. Um, uh, they're also similar in that they maintain the library's role in the funding and negotiation process. We're not just telling authors, go pay article processing charges. We're trying to mediate that relationship and, and facilitate that arrangement. Um, and they both involve a deposit of final published articles into open access repositories. Scope 3, um, it's an initiative based at CERN to convert uh, core high energy physics journals to open access. The idea behind Scope 3 is that one would take the existing uh, expenditures for subscription journals in those fields, and that is a unique field in which much of the publishing is concentrated in a small number of journals. So you take the money that the subscription uh, expenditures that are directed to those journals and migrate them over to um, a, a pooled fund that becomes a funding consortium. And the consortium itself would manage the publishing and peer review process. It would essentially outsource the publishing process. This initiative has it's been uh, gestating for a while and it has not uh, achieved yet the, the critical mass that it needs to actually go forward and become uh, an active project. It is still going forward, however, right um, at this time they've uh, received about 70 percent of the, the funding that they believe they need. Our open access pilot with Springer was another um, sort of first in the U.S. initiative that you see uh, undertook. It's a two-year pilot under which all uh, UC authored articles are published with um, full and immediate open access using Springer's open choice uh, paradigm. Um, this was negotiated as part of our license fee for the journals. We did, there was no increase in our license fee for the journals, so essentially we are paying Springer what we were paying Springer the day before the pilot. 
Again, this notion of transforming existing journals, um, uh, some of the, the, the benefits that we see in experimenting in this direction, it's non-disruptive for authors, it supports their existing uh, reward system, it, ex it leverages existing relationships and funding streams, so right now we, we hand, hand publishers a pretty big check and we could still hand publishers a pretty big check and that's one financial transaction, so it preserves some of the efficiencies that are inherent in some of the relationships. It seems scalable. We can negotiate that relationship, again, on behalf of the institution. It can affect a large number of journals at once if, if an arrangement like this um, is affected with a, with a large publisher. It also allows us and, and the library to support authors who lack research funding and therefore would not be likely to have funding that they can draw upon to support article processing fees. Um, there are certainly many challenges in, in uh, pursuing this model. Obviously, uh, a small number of institutions have done this with Springer, um, but most of the content is still, still subscription-based uh, content. Um, we don't really know how the cost picture is changing um, for Springer, so how can we leverage our expenditures and make sure that we're keeping costs under control? There's some contraction, potential contraction of revenue that happens if you convert to an author side um, uh, uh, system. And in the, uh, an arrangement like the one we have with Springer, where the library is essentially handing money to the publisher uh, in the way that we do currently, there's no obvious role for funding bodies in that particular model. Um. Mike has introduced us to green versus gold. Uh, obviously, publishers are more interested in the gold route, and you see all the other models I described now. Um, have to do with open access journals or journals that offer the open access option. So the first is um, hybrid open access. Journals that um, traditionally are subscription journals and they charge subscriptions and content is behind access barriers, but we do offer the option to make your article open access against payment of a fee. And when we do this, uh, we at least do it right so we don't just open it, which is free access, but we um, publish the article under a Creative Commons attribution on commercial license, which allows uh, free reuse and distribution for non-commercial purposes. You can definitely say the default model for a Springer journal is the hybrid open choice option. If an author wants to pay us for making his article open access, the fee is 2,000 euro. 3,000 US dollar. If the, your institution has an experimental agreement with us, such as uh, University of California, the fees are taken care of centrally and you don't have to pay. It is very appealing to say to an institution, um, you pay us 100 dollars right now for your license deal and of course we just substitute this hundred you have you know no open access arrangement with us and you pay one hundred dollar for subscriptions and we just substitute it slowly against open access right so you pay twenty now for open access and you pay only eighty of it for subscription in total it stays the same but you have prepaid your open access component looks very appealing However, it works only under two uh, conditions. One is that all customers do this at the same time. And the second is people publish as much as they read. If we now say to you, you know, you keep the level at 100, 20% is for open access, only 80% is for the license, then let's keep in mind that for this 20% of open access articles, we can't sell them to anybody else, right? So we are actually, I mean, this is a strong disadvantage as long as we see it, as long as the transition takes place and we don't have a switch overnight. So there is a certain risk, or you could say disadvantage, to publishers going into this transition. As Stuart Chiba, you mentioned Stuart Chiba says, um, yeah, there needs to be a certain support for publishers to step into this transition. And we believe that as long as the transition takes place, we need to ask for extra payment of those who dare to pioneer open access to compensate for the losses uh, that we make at other spots. <laughs>